Okay, guys, uh, shall we start? Uh, today we are going to start with a new chapter. The chap this chapter is about uh, having coagulation and uh, flocculation, the two terms that we have uh, in water treatment uh, uh, progress process. Uh, uh, let me give you a review about what we had in the previous, uh, um, previous uh, lectures. Um, Uh, in previous lectures, we talked about if you have a, a, a yeah, uh, if we have, uh, let me say this is the raw water. Uh, we have a raw water, and this raw water is includes some uh, particles, solid matters, and uh, solid um, like sand, gravel, and so on. So they may need. They may have uh, particles with, with the diam different diameters that we have. So these are uh, solids and they have different diameter, different diameters means what we have small, we have large. So there will be from small to large diameters. And uh, there will be in each uh, particle along this particle, the, the water is coming inside this tank and it's going. So there is a Q in and it will be Q out. Uh, so some of times it will be, uh, the flow will be from top uh, to bottom. Uh, sometimes the, the tanks, it will be designed to, to, to have a flow from the bottom to the top. That's will the, the, the Q in will be from the bottom of the tank and it will go and it will be distributed in, a, uh, in between a, uh, a circular shape and then what will be half like this. Now what I mean, what I want you to know that each sediment will have a, each particle if its diameter is equal to dp and it has a specific gravity and uh, then it will be uh, the velocity, settling velocity of this tank, of this particle will be equal to one over G, one over 18 G over mu, and it's raw particle minus raw water, D particle squared. This is called the Stokes law. And uh, this is what we have, the sediment particle. The water itself, the water is going down. So the water is having a velocity the velocity of water, of water, this is the velocity of uh, sand or particle itself. The velocity of water is a Q over surface area, uh, which is called SOR. Now, uh, if, if the water velocity was just equal to the uh, sediment uh, velocity, it means if SOR equal to V settling, then this time, this particle will 100% will be uh, settled. The D particle is equal to D particle 100% or it's called DP naught. Then the VS is equal to VS naught. And then 100% removal will occur, means the efficiency is equal to 100%. Now, uh, what if the particle was greater than this uh, DP naught? It means that the velocity of, of the particle is greater than the velocity of water. So it means the particle will be removed early and it will be totally removed. So uh, again, the settling uh, will be more than 100%. Uh, but if the particle was, uh, the diameter of the particle was uh, very small or it was smaller than the, this particle, then it will be somehow, the removal will not be, uh, the velocity of the particle will be less than the velocity of water. It means that we don't have the 100% like previous. So what shall we do? We have to find the divide by this Vs by the volume of velocity of water and see how much is the settling velocity. 
Uh, this is usually what we have in the uh, design uh, of the tanks and the uh, efficiency of the tanks are very important to know whether the particle uh, will be removed or not. Uh, do you have any question regarding the, this review or the previous chapter? Ahmed? Yes, doctor. Do you have any question regarding because you, you, you wasn't in the... No, no, thank you, doctor. Okay. Now we have uh, next to the sedimentation, uh, we have another two process which is very important in the treatment of water. After that, after we have a uh, raw water, there will be intake. As we said, there is an intake here. And from the intake, there will be a sump and there will be, it's the first unit. And there will be from the first unit, there will be sedimentation tank. And uh, after sedimentation tank, there will be another two processes. This two processes is, will be uh, adding some chemicals. Why we will add uh, chemicals? Why we are going to add some chemicals? Because in this process, process of sedimentation, that those particles have been settled when they have a diameter greater than or equal to dp naught, or uh, some the, the 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 diameters. Most of the diameter will be for most of the granular particle will be settled. What is left for us, there will be just the suspended solids. The suspended solid it means that we have a solid in the, inside the, the, the water. Still, they are not going to settle and they are not going to float. So what should we do? We will just add some chemicals here and uh, the chemicals we will, 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 will be added in uh, will be prepared in another place and then it will be added to this tank and then there will be a flash mixing flash mixing here uh, just to uh, to mix the chemicals with the uh, with the water that's coming from the tank and then after we are uh, the water usually the the water will not uh, take more than uh, one to two minutes here just to just we have uh, we will add chemicals and we will just um, uh, have a flash mixing tank here uh, and then after that we we are considered that the, the chemicals have been mixed here rapidly then we will let this mixing uh, will help those suspended materials along to just uh, make it be together and agglomerate and um, attach each to other and make a large particle. So the process was first, it was here. This is are the suspended materials. Uh, the suspended, these are suspended solids. Those are not that, that they are, they are, they haven't, they haven't been uh, settled in the sedimentation tanks. So what I what I will, will uh, go and what I should do, I will just add some chemicals. Here's those uh, chemical materials firstly, and then I will mix them together. Flash, flash mixing in a tank for two minutes more than, not more than two minutes, one to two minutes. So what will be happen next? I will send this mixture in a, another tank and then there will be another mixing Then about, it will be called slow mixing tank. Slow mixing tank is just, uh, just to, to have uh, uh, particles and chemicals together in such a way. So we have here like this, and we have, this is called flock, flock. So what, what, what's the property of this flock? By the way, this is, will be a uh, slow mixing. The slow mixing tank, uh, usually it will be for uh, one hour. Now, but within, uh, there will be a slow mixing. There will be a tool that will mix these together to attach. 
Now, these are, and uh, th these are particles and chemicals together. They have bigger in volume, they have weight, and this weight will go down and then have a larger uh, set the settling velocity, and then they will they will settle down in the bottom of the stack, and then uh, we are succeeding in having uh, settling these uh, uh, suspended uh, solids. So the term of coagulation is just mean you will have adding chemicals. Flocculation is just mixing, slow mixing process. These are the two terms that we will have today. Now, uh, what are the chemicals? Uh, I will not go deeper than I will give you some more common, uh, common uh, chemicals that we have. One of those common, uh, we have alum, alum which is Al2SO4, XH2O, this is a chemical material and we are using this in Arabic, it's called al -shab. and in Kurdish it's called Zah. So these are uh, three uh, material, uh, the, the, the common, and by the way, this is called aluminum sulfide, uh, the chemical name and the uh, industry name is called alum. This is, will be with the most common one that's used in uh, adding water. And uh, by the way, when they are adding, uh, it will react with the water, there will be CaSO3. And then we will get uh, Al2SOH by 3, and there will be a flow here. Now, uh, there, is, there, uh, is there any other chemicals else? Yes, we have. Uh, polymers, polymers are uh, polyelectrolyte. And we have uh, uh, chloride, uh, sorry, um, uh, we have uh, fluoride and some uh, uh, iron, Fe, and some other common chemical also. But the most one that we are using is alum. Uh, how much alum should we add it? Uh, we will add, uh, uh, we will every day you should have to, to do a test. This test is called jar test. This is a jar test. The jar test is usually there is a six bakers, six bakers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and their volumes are one liter standard each, the volume of every baker Beaker. Then there will be the samples of our raw water will come and we will take uh, samples from the raw water in, in these bakers. What we have here, we have mixers. There will be a mixer here. And there is a video for this, how to do a jar test. This is called jar test. Now what I will do, I will prepare uh, uh, different uh, concentrations of alum. I will add for example, two milligram here of alum. And I will add three, for example, milligram here, four milligram here, five and six, seven. So what I will add, I, I add two milligram of alum. Then the concentration of alum here, it will be two milligram per one liter of raw water. Means two milligram per liter. Now, uh, after having a slow mixing, uh, for one minute flash, quick mixing, then for one hour slow, and I will see if there is any residual will come here, will be here, or there will not. So what should you do if you saw any residual here? So you will say this is the best, the best one. Or you can take uh, a sample from this uh, baker and test its Turbidity. Turbidity is a unit that's used to see whether the water is clean or not. Clean water, it means that this is not a turbid water. Uh, but if we have uh, turbid water, it means that it will not be transparent. Uh, 
that means there was there will be look like a glass um, it look like um, a window a glass window and somehow it it can be uh, 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 let me say uh, uh, it will be not clean dark and somehow um, uh, let it look like a glue inside this thing. Now the jar is it will be tested by this, and then in this procedure we will take the best one. Now the question, doctor. Yes. Excuse me. How do you know that the water is become becomes clean after you add the alum? Yeah. The procedure is first of all after adding these jar doses to the samples of water, you will start running all these six jars together. There is a. Uh, 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 these are, uh, there is a machine that's rotating, there is a mixer here. So they will start adding what you have to do. You have to, uh, to mix these uh, chemicals with the sample of water for one minute rapidly. Rapidly we have, uh, maybe we don't, uh, we have for uh, 100 revolution per minute. Then after we have done with the one minute flash, then we will go for one hour and in a slow way. It means for maybe 10 to 20 a revolution per minute. Then after that, we will wait and we will see, is there any residual here or not? So having any residual, it means that these chemicals are reacted with the solids and they, uh, uh, they interact together and then the flocks have been created and then they will, they, they have been settled. Otherwise, you cannot say uh, this is not a good one. Uh, absolutely different doses will make different uh, settle, settling, settlements here. So the one is that giving you more settling, it is the, the best one. So uh, that's what we are, uh, we, we have to know. And, uh, besides of that, this is in, uh, in, uh, by uh, normal light, but besides of that, we will take sample of water from each of the bakers and we test for turbidity. So that tank or that baker that will give you minimum turbidity, it will be the best one, the best dose that, that you have to be, to, yeah, that you have to add it to the raw water. For example, in our sample here, if the best one was uh, this baker number three, which is four milligram to be added. So four milligram is needed, the best one or optimum dose was four milligram of alum per one liter of water, right? Now uh, means how much is the total or total needed water? Uh, needed along to this one, I will just multiply this dose by Q. So Q of the uh, times the concentration, it means, for example, if I have 1000 meter cube per hour, I will multiply this one by four milligram per liter. Now look at this one, uh, four milligram, uh, you will have means that uh, uh, four milligram with this one. If, if you want to just 1000 meter cube per hour, one times four milligrams, so four times the 10 to the power minus three kilogram per uh, liter. And the liters, and you can say, I will just multiply this liter by, to make it in meter cube, just multiply by 10 to the power minus three uh, meter cube because one liter is 10 to the power minus three liters. And these two units will cancel out. This is what we'll go with this one. So we need at least 4,000 kilograms per hour or four tons per hour. You will uh, give uh, uh, an order to those the, op the, core, the operators in the plant, please add four times per one hour to, to, to be added to this plan. This is the way that we are uh, using uh, our testing first, and then I will order what should be. This test should be done at least two to two, two, three, two times to three times every day, 
in this plan because the people are waiting uh, for clean water and the clean water will come after uh, adding the uh, very good or optimum dose. Uh, any error in this optimum dose, it means that you have either you will have extra chemicals in the water which make the color of water become yellow or you will have not uh, reached the, uh, the purified degree that you need for what you are asking for. Is that clear? Yes, thank you very much. But doctor, in yes. which in which phase of this, like we will add uh, that kind of the alum? I mean, after the sedimentation. Yeah, planning. yeah. After the sedimentation, because the purpose of adding alum is not for this is how this is the sedimentation process. So the just the gravity will act here. So we don't need to add any chemicals here, but. After this, the sedimentation completed, we, need, we know that there is some of the small particles here. So they need a, an enhancement to be settled. This enhancement comes from the chemicals. So definitely the adding chemicals will be after the process of uh, sedimentation, okay? In some of the uh, treatment plants, they, they mix these two processes together. Uh, they add the chemicals uh, directly to the raw water and they get all of the settlement in the discrete and those they are not suspended in one tank. In that case, you have to have uh, extra volume of the tanks. For example, if the tank was just needed to have only three to four hours time, to stay in this tank. If you are adding uh, chemicals and the chemicals will be combined here, then you have to wait for eight hours. Uh, that's called the clarifiers or the, 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 the common clarifier or the combined clarifier. It means that it will work as a sedimentation tank and it will work as a flotation tank. And also, uh, I can see, uh, show it to you. Uh, uh, by the way, this is the alum. It looked like salt only. And here is the procedure of uh, of what how the this is the alum, and this is the natural alkalinity that we have in natural water. So due to this combination, there will be this is called the flock, and this is will be settled down and it will uh, take the uh, suspend particles together. Uh, yeah, this is what we have. This uh, this is the flocculation. This this device used for mixing, and it will be placed in the clarifiers. Uh, okay. Uh, now, uh, if we are conventional treatment plant, they are not to be combined together. And uh, what we need as an engineer, we have to know what first those coagulation or the process of mixing the chemicals uh, with the raw water and the chemicals together in the tank and they will be go to flocculator. We said this is, should be a flash mixing tank. And this flash mixing tanks, we just need just to, uh, the purpose of, uh, we, have, we have to have a very rapid mixing, that's one. And we, we have to have uh, just a few minutes here. Now, there is a design recommendations for this, uh, this step. Uh, the designs will be here. You got this one? <coughs> the rapid mixing tanks and design, first of all, we have to have at least two tanks. Uh, the mixing time, it will be uh, from five to six seconds. 60 seconds means uh, one minute. And uh, 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 ex yeah, maximum not to be two minutes, less than two minutes. In, in worse condition, you have to have less than two minutes. 
then uh, there is a tank depth, usually it will be square, but the depth of the tank, it will be between two to four uh, meter and uh, uh, height to length of the tank. So the tank usually will be like this. Uh, this is will be the tank. There is a flow that's coming here. The flow that's coming here. And usually we have impellers of, uh, sorry, there will be impellers here or a motor that will have in to mix this one. And there will be the chemicals, our, the chemicals here. So raw water is coming to this tank. Uh, which is the length here and the width here and the height is here and the length is here. Now uh, we have the Q. Uh, so the Q is coming here. We know the Q and we know the time. So when we have a Q and we, we have a time, so the volume can be uh, found usually Volume divided by time is equal to Q, means volume is equal to the Q times T. This T is between uh, one to two minutes, not more than two minutes. Now I have this, I just multiply this by that, I will get the volume. But while, while we have the volume of this time, just we have to consider this one. The height, it will be not more than four meter, it will be between two to four. So you have to pick one of them. You assume one uh, edge. When you are assuming the edge, so what, what's remain? We have the volume. Then uh, from the volume, I can get the uh, uh, area, which is the L times W times H is the volume. I have this, I have assumed this one. So I will have the length times W and the relation between the length and W is one to one or three to one. It means that uh, either it will be a square or something like that. This is belongs to just a flash uh, mixing tank. You can see there is a value here, it's called a G. What is that G is uh, for? That is called gradient, gradient uh, velocity. What's the gradient velocity? It will be per second, measure, measured by per second. It will be, it, it tells us how much meter per second uh, will be varied, uh, how much meter per meter per second will be varied. How much meter is the velocity will be decreased per meter of the time. That's the, uh, the gradient. And uh, its uh, definition, uh, its definition, it will be the G is the hydraulic uh, gradient. It will be the square root of this P divided by volume of the tank and times uh, uh, volume of the tank times and then viscosity. Uh, the the tank, this tank, when I'm talking about G, means uh, there is a mixing. The, the mixings means there will be, this mixing will help the water will be, mm, have a velocity. And this velocity it will be different than uh, in each time, per meter length of the diameter. And now, how much it will be, it will depend on the power. How much is the power of this motor? The power, power of this motor that will, uh, rotate the, and the, the, this flash mixer and the volume of the tank. So if you have the tank is high, have a very uh, great volume and the, the, the motor is very small. So what will be happen? The motor is not, uh, cannot consider all the time of the water in the tank. So the mixing will be very, very little. But what that means will, will, will be, we have a very, uh, little value of G. When we have the motor is very high, it means I'm using instead of having one pump, I will, uh, one motor, I will have four mixers, okay, five mixers. So all of them are working together. That means we have, we need to have 
the, the, the power used by them is very high. So the P is high, the volume of them is uh, considered to be horizontal, so it means small, so the value of G is high. By the way, viscosity means will depend, this is will be affected by the temperature of water because if we have uh, in the cold areas, uh, the water will be freezing. So you need uh, to know that having cold water needs power more or will, will the effect on the velocity of mixing. Uh, so uh, having in a cold area means that the value of the G will be lower. Now, my point is, if I have a flash tank, mixing tank, it means that this, in this tank there will be very flash mixing. Means what? Based on this uh, definition, means that we will have a very small volume of tank and we have a motor that has enough power. That will be P over V will be a high value. Means the mixing will be very uh, fast. Ma means if in case that if G was a high value for high value, so that means what? Having a G for high value means what? Hello, Ali? Ali, are you listening? Ali? Ahmed? Ahmed Karza. Better. Sir. Uh, no, I think the other two guys are not aware. Uh, if we have a value of, uh, a, a, the value of G was high, so what that means to you? I'm in the- Volume is smaller? No, I, um, I mean, if G was great high, it means, do we have a flash mixing or we have a slow mixing? Should be a Should flash be mixing. Flash mixing, rapid mixing, flash yeah. or or rapid. Why? Because uh, having high value of G means we have high value of P. That's that, uh, that that's that's constant because the P higher P means higher G. Higher P it means that you have more power, more motors are working together. Volume of the tank it means uh, we have small tank. It means that if you have a very high G, it means we have a small tank. So the small tank means the mixing will be very rapid. So it will be uh, uh, easy to mix a water in a, a just a cup of water instead of having a tank. So having a small volume, it means that there will be a G. Back to this point, you can see in our design parameters for rapid tank mixing, the value of G is 500 to 1000 per second. While for the slow mixing tank, we have the G values between 10 to 80. So less, uh, uh, if we have value of, as, as less as the value of G is was, it means that we are going to a slow mixing tank. Uh, uh, if we have a high value of G, it means that we are in a flash mixing tank. Uh, the, the, after doing this procedure or calculation, we, the time is for having uh, the slow mixing tank and the time here is between one to two hours. And usually it will be because there are 16 minutes. 16 minutes mean one hour. The G should be between 10 to the 80. And there will be, uh, in, in slow mixing tanks, we are not using uh, impellers. We are using another thing. Another thing, we are using paddle wheels. Paddle wheels, it will be look like this. This is, will be the cross section of the tank. And there will be a wheel. There will be a wheel and uh, the water is coming uh, inside this tank uh, vertically, uh, sorry, a perpendicular. So the water is going this way. And what we have, we have the paddles. The paddles have, and all this is, will be wood. And it will just, uh, there will be a mixing here. So the water is coming inside this way, and there will be a rotation. 
this rotation, there will be another one here, by the way. And this is also the paddles. This is called paddles. And this is will be a rotate converse. So that will be like this. And within this one, the water is coming from here to there and here. So this is will be slow mixing and the water flux will come and uh, it will be uh, formed. Like this way, uh, can, you can see in the slides, here's the flash mixing tank. The water here is coming here. And these are called paddles. And this is called wheel. So we have in, uh, this is uh, another one. Then there will be a, a wall here and the water is coming, going from down or this one and going up and from going down. And then we have a clean water in this way. Sometimes they will put uh, uh, this way or sometimes the, the, the flash it will be this way. So either the paddles will be vertical or it will be horizontal. So this is the paddles. And the paddles are paddles horizontally. Or the paddles here is vertically, like this. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. OK. Now we have, we know that now we learned uh, there is two procedures. There will be a flash mixing tank, there will be a slow mixing tank. Uh, what we need, we need to know the design of uh, the dimension of the tank. So the dimension of the tank for the rapid mixer, it will depend on how much is the power that we have. Then after that, I will get uh, for this is for the motor. And the volume uh, is, this is the volume of the tank. The volume of the tank, we say that this is the Q times the T. The T is between one to two minutes. I have the Q, I get there. And the volume, when we have the volume, there is an edge. We have to assume the edge between two and four. And then I will get the area and I will get the dimensions. After having the dimensions, I have to check uh, what kind of motors are needed. So to do that, you have to either assume the G, which is, should be between uh, 500 to 1000 as it's a very flash tank. So we have this, assume this one, I get the volume from the previous time the viscosity is given. And then after that, I will select a proper mixer, a proper impeller to just mix the water in like this tank. Uh, uh, this is for the rapid tank. I, I can, we have, I think, an example here. Um, Sorry. Now, let us have, yeah, just we have this example. Look at this example. You see that find the required power uh, for a mechanical uh, mixing unit. Mechanical mixing unit, it means the rapid mechanical, it means that we have a rapid mix time. So what I want, I want to know how much is the power. Power usually is measured in kilowatt or horsepower. So how much is the power of the motors that we need for Ghana? If we have uh, a, a tank that the Q is equal to 300 meter cube per hour. Now we have the Q, assume the temperature. If the temperature of water is 20 means that uh, and the G is 100. Uh, per second. Per second means we can have a value of G between 500 to 1000. So I say that uh, don't assume the G is equal to 600. Also uh, find the tank dimensions. I mean the, the dimension of the tank, but here is say that the tank, it should be not rectangular, use the circular one. 
So at circle one, there is a diameter in this uh, shape and there is an edge. So find the D and H, how much are they? So what should we do? We should have, uh, first of all, look at the Q and we have, um, uh, by the way, we need to know how much is the viscosity, the viscosity of water. Uh, um, and um, I think, yeah, the viscosity 1.07, 10 to the power minus three. Uh, 1.07. 10 to the power minus 3 kilogram per meter per second. This is the viscosity is required. And also the time. Now I will assume, as it's a rapid, I, I will assume uh, the time is equal to one minute. I will just, uh, and this process will be just taking one minute for assume. Now for the tank, when we have one minute inside this tank, if the tank was, time was one minute, so how much it will be the volume of this tank? We just what? We just uh, multiply the Q by the time. Now the Q in this time is uh, 300 meter cube per an hour times one minute. What is the one minute is? We should convert this uh, to, and uh, I will say the hour is equal to 16 minutes. Right, and this is our is going to this will be here. So sixty is here, and this is will be one. This is will be five. So the result of this tanks we have we need uh, to have a tank of a volume of uh, five meter cube. Three hundred. This is thirty six. Yeah, five meter cube will be the volume of this tank. Now. Uh, this volume of the tank, if you have a circular shape, cylindrical shape, we have D, it's, the volume is equal to pi, uh, D square over four, this is the uh, area of the base times the edge. Am I right? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay, now, uh, as it's given to you, assume that the depth of water is one half of the height, so uh, I will use volume is equal to pi d squared over four times the edge here is 1.5 d. Now, what will be the volume? It will be in terms of d cube at uh, 1.5 times pi divided by four will equal to how much? Um, 1.5 times um, 3.14 divided by 4, which will become uh, 1.1775. Now, after having this volume, and uh, now we have, this is will come with 1.1175 dq. So from this one, then find d. D, it means the diameter of the tank. Uh, uh, so five divided by 1.1775. Uh, yeah, it will be four, take the uh, power of one over three. Now the diameter is equal to 1.62 meter use 1.65 uh, meter. Uh, now we have the tank diameter is 1.65. This is 1.65. Now the edge will be how much? The edge will be 1 over 5. Edge is equal to 1.5 diameter times the T, which is 1.5 times 1.65. And then It will become 2.475, use 2.5 meter. So we need to have a tank of 2.5 meter. This is was the design of this uh, flash meter. How much is the power required? The power will be based on, uh, then the power uh, will be is equal to how much? We have the G is equal to the square root of the P divided by volume of the tax times mu. 
Now, uh, we will assume that G, or it's given to us that the G is equal to 600. Here's the 600. Uh, so 600 per second. Now this is 600 per second. We'll come with the square root of the power, which is I'm looking for, and the volume of the tank. So here's the volume of the tank was how much? Uh, uh, five meter cube, yeah, very good. Five meter cube times the viscosity. The viscosity will be, uh, I think, uh, 1.07. <coughs> uh, 10 to the power minus three kilograms yeah, per three. Ten to the power minus three. 1.07 times 10 to the power minus three. Uh, I am sorry, 1.07 times 10 to the power minus. So from this one, we can just find 600 square will equal to P over 5 times uh, 1.07 times 10 to the power minus 3. And from this one, P will equal, and by the way, the 5 is a meter cube. This is what we telegram here, meter per second. And uh, uh, then the P will be equal to how much? Uh, uh, 1.07 times minus 3 times 5. 1,926. Yeah, 1,926. And guess, yeah, that's what. So if I want to see how much it will be in kilowatts, so it will be 1.9. A kilowatt will be the needed power just to, it means that if you are looking for a motor mixers, you have to think about the power of this mixer should be not less than 1.9 kilowatt. That's in case that you have only one tank. If you have two tanks, so you have to divide the Q by two, um, but in that case, you have to have um, more two mixer for each of the tanks you should have a mixer. Is it easy? Yes, doctor. Yes, but um, I think Ali, can you hear me? Ali? Okay, now this was for the first uh, term of the question. The second term of the question is that uh, then, okay, after this, we have mixed the chemicals with the, uh, and we designed the flash mixer tank. What will be next? The next thing is that we have to have uh, um, a, a flocculator tank. The flocculator tank, it will be like this. Yeah, it will be like this. So what we need, uh, we have these are puddles. and they are going to be rotated and we say this is a shaft so this is called the row a row of the puddles and we have three shafts one two three now what what's needed here to know is first of all this these are this is needs to know how much is the p for this time and we need to know how much is the dimensions of the tank you can see uh, the depth of water is here if I say this is H and this is L, so L times H is the cross-sectional area. Now, it tells us that the area of the puddles, uh, it will be, the area of the puddles will not be, it shouldn't be great. It should be less than 10%. It should be 10 to 20%, only 10 to 10, 20% of the whole area. This is the whole area. So the area of the puddle should be less than, uh, should be very uh, having a portion of 10 to 20 percent only for that area. That's why we need the water to go to the puddles and to be mixed. Now, uh, this is one. Uh, the second thing is to how, so how to find this? The, as the the puddles we are going to be rotated, so uh, we we have to know how much is the power due to this rotation. 
uh, that's one. The second thing, we need to know how much is the volume. Uh, as we said, the volume of this tank will depend on the G. G will be equal to the power of uh, square root of P over volume of the tank times the mu. Now, uh, we have the value of uh, the G, it will be between 10 to, I think, 80 per second. So from this one and the volume of the tank, the tank, uh, we say the water will have to stay for the one hour to two hour only in this tank. So it means that I have the T. So the time is one hour. So from this time and we have the Q, we can say find the volume. Volume is equal to the Q times the T. After having this, I will substitute the value of V here and I will substitute the value of G that I have to assume from 10 to 18. And then I will find the P. The P is the power that needs just to rotate that P. And um, sometimes uh, we have in for the puddle we use another rule, another rule. This power will be uh, considered for the whole three, one, two, three. By the way, this is one, two, three four, five, six. Uh, this is six puddles per the, this line. And there is another six here. So we have 12 puddles in each uh, system. Uh, we have for these puddles uh, another rule. The power that we, we get uh, from this equation, it should be uh, how much is the area and how much is the distance between every puddle and uh, the center to center of the puddles and the, the thickness of the puddles are also a factor and also the width of the puddle is also a factor. So this power will go with the, uh, will be distributed for this uh, one uh, by the puddles and the, the diameter of the puddles and this is called the rotation diameter and uh, the velocity of this puddle. The velocity means how many revolution per minute, uh, so rotation per minute that will be there. So rotation per minute, I will have to convert it to velocity. This velocity is called velocity of the puddles. Velocity of the puddle in air. If I want to see and if there was water inside this puddles, so it will, the value of this uh, velocity will be less due to the water and it's called PD. Vd is the dragged uh, velocity of the puddle, and uh, usually Vd will be less than the Vp because we know that the water will not let uh, this rotation happen easily, so it will resist to that velocity. It will make a kind of uh, of resistance. If this resistance not reach more than 25 percent, so it means what? It means that you need to increase the power by 25% just to cover this uh, velocity of that. There is a rule for to, uh, an equation uh, to find uh, a puddle, so the power per each puddle. And here's the, and by the way, this is the jar test and uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, where is it, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, this is the equation. The, this power that we have just for uh, for uh, rotating the this is the puddles. We need uh, to know it's basically the area of the puddle itself. This is the area of the puddle area, the total area of the puddle, and the area times the velocity. So this puddle are going to rotate. So what is the velocity of this puddle velocity? So the velocity of the puddles after I have this, I will just multiply the, to make it cube, I multiply by the area. What that means, well, means if you have more area, you need more power. You need more power. And if you want to have uh, this puddle will rotate faster, so you need more power. Uh, you have to be careful. And rho is the raw water area is the total area. The total area, area means that this area, 
times this, uh, for example, if this is was L, this was T, so L times small t. This is the area of one puzzle. So I have another one here, so two times this one, it will be the total area of the puzzles. The total area times the velocity of this puzzles, which is, um, will be found by, we have N is the rotation per minute. Rotation per minute means how much uh, it means that uh, when we want to find VT, VT uh, times uh, uh, D, uh, it will be uh, pi D, because every time N, uh, N, N is the number of uh, rotation per minute. So N uh, at each N, there will be a pi D. Uh, this is the movement, uh, pi D RPM is equal to uh, n times r p pi d and this is per minute divided by 60. This is the law, uh, the uh, n times pi times d uh, divided by 16 will convert the rotation per minute to meter per second. This is what we have to use it in the equation. So this is the uh, linear, linear uh, velocity. There is a linear velocity, there is an area, there is a row, there is a CD, and then we have to find the P for this one. So the, the, the procedure is, do you have, uh, do you want to see how much is the power required? So you have to start with the G, with the time, and find the P, and then distribute the P for the, uh, or you can go back with having, okay, I'm, I'm having, I'm, I'm going to analyze, I will see how much is the, this uh, motor will cover. So we'll check with what is existing. Uh, do you want to take a break? Let's finish it, doctor. Okay. Are you good with this? Uh, yes. Law? Yes, doctor. Okay. Uh, Ali, are you with us? Ali? Hello, Ali. Anyway, uh, okay, so uh, when I wanna, uh, now this is was the basic idea for flotillation time. C sub T is a drag coefficient. Drag coefficient uh, usually will be less than one. It will depend on if you have a structure in water it will not be as the, the same structure in air. Uh, raw water it depends on the land area. This one. And the efficiency of the velocity of the puddle, when we have this puddle is rotating in air, it will be fully effective, but it will be uh, less effective uh, by 80%, 20% less than what we have it in air. That's called the efficiency. So usually the VD, it will be called 0 0.18, 70 to 0.80% of the VP the puddles velocity in air. And, um, okay, you know, uh, these are the, the, the design uh, parameters that we need. Uh, let me just solve this equation for you. We have a rectangular flaculator, means the flaculating is in slow mixing tank with three rotating puddles. So we have three to rotating puddles to treat uh, 300 uh, meter cube per minute or during 20 minutes. So this is the time and this is the Q. So we have the Q is 300 meter cube per minute and we have the T which is equal to 20 minutes. And uh, we have three rotating puzzles. What that means is that we have a tank like this and the water is coming inside this one. There is a first, this is the first puddle. There is a second puddle and there is a third puddle. Those are the three puddles. So this is will be rotating this way. And there is another rotation like this and there is another rotation like this. Now, uh, what is given to us, uh, the time, the time is 20 minutes and I have the Q is 300 meter cube per minute. So what should, first I can find, find the volume. The volume is very important, it's equal to Q times the T. 
so 300 meter cube per uh, uh, per, per uh, hour per minute sorry times 10 10 t minutes is the time detention time of this uh, of this water in this tank so what i will get I will get the total volume of 6,000 meter cube is the volume of the tank of the, of the cork fluid liquor should be there. Now this, uh, we have the, the, the length to edge and W to edge is will be like this, three to edge and W to edge. So this tank, So this tank uh, is, uh, this is the tank. Now, uh, this is the tank that we have. The tank is will work in this way. Uh, the water is coming inside this tank Q, which is equal to 300 meter cube per minute. And the time here in this tank is 20 minutes, means that we get the volume of this tank is equal to 6,000 meter cube. Now, I say this is the uh, W and this is the H. And this is the L. What is the relation between them? The L is equal to say that the L length of this tank is uh, will be three times the H, and the W is two times the H. So the volume that I found that it was six thousand meter cube should be and the length, which is three H times the width, which is two H times the H. That's the way that I'm going to times two is and that means that we have six H cube. Now uh, H cube is equal to uh, one thousand, and then H will be the uh, uh, one third, uh, third of one thousand, which means how much? So. Will be 10? Yeah, very good. It will be 10 meter. Now we have H equal to 10 meter and there will be, the length will be 30 meters and the width will be 20 meters. Now after having this, uh, then uh, now what's asking to find the L, that we found this one. Uh, it said that the revolution, uh, the, sorry, the rotation per minute of the puddles of the diameter of nine meter. So we say that uh, there is a, this is should be 10 by 10. So it look like we have 20, we have 10. So I will put a puddle here, I'm a puddle here. And they will fix them here. And there will be a rotation for this puddle. Now I say that how much is the revolution per minute required just to do this mixing. We have, by the way, this is another one. And we have, this is another one. Now having three paddles, you have to be aware that the power should be divided by three. Now back to what we have. We have to know, so the, the rotation of the, we say that the, the, the edge is equal to 10 meter. And the diameter of the paddles is nine meter. Why it's nine meter? It should be 
the water should uh, th this uh, puddle should not come out from the tank. Uh, I, I want to take a section from the tank. Here is the section. This is will be 20 meters. This is will be 10 meter. This is the edge. This is the width. Now, what we have here, we have puddles. The puddles will be here like this, and it will be like this. So these puddles are connected together, and they are going to rotate. Now I say the diameter center to center of this puddles are nine meter. And be aware that we have over all 10 meters. So if you take nine meters, you definitely you have to left, leave a space here, but 20 centimeters, and then there will be another 20 centimeters from top. That will be there. So it's make a sense that you have to, the diameter between the puddles should be less than 10 and it's nine, okay. Now, I say that how much it will be the RPM, rotation per minute, if the diameter was nine. This is the, uh, the one. And why I need this? I need this nine because I'll have to convert. I, when I find the uh, V, I will find the V. And uh, this V needs to have the nine to just to find the RPM. And now there is a V, which is the VD. VD. So this VD times the uh, pi VD is the distance that will be, uh, the every rotation will take place. So uh, 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 VD, and this is will be rotation per minute. And now we have C sub D. We have assumed 25 losses in the velocity. So C sub D is the coefficient of drag, which will be, will be 1.2. Now, uh, how much is the, uh, the RPM we need? First of all, we have to find, um, um, yeah. Uh, assume the area, it will be 10 percentage, raw water is given to us. Uh, so 10 percentage means uh, the total area of the two puddles should not become more than 10 percentage of what? Of this area, this area is 10 by 20. So uh, area, total area is equal to 10 times 20 meter means 200 meter square. So this is the area of the section. Now the paddles area is 10 percent, as you say that 20 is 10 to 20, yeah, it's 10 percent, 10 percentage of what of the total area of the cross section area which is 200 meters square that means 0.1 but it means that it will be uh, 20 meters square this is will be the uh, area of the puddles what that 20 per meter square means that we have here the area of this puddle and the area of this puddle both of them together will be uh, area of the bottle is equal to 20 meter. Why I need uh, why, why I need this one? Because you say that the power is equal to one over two C sub D rho to times area total times V cube, uh, V drag cube. Now the area is given. Now I found that one and I have C sub D 1.2 and the rho water is, I have it. So what's left for me is the P. I have to have P and then I will get uh, VD. To find P, uh, it's very easy and just you need to know what is the value of uh, G, uh, value of G, and uh, then uh, from the value of G, uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 we have to, uh, and no, the power is given by the way, 35 kilowatt, so uh, 35 kilowatt, yeah, uh, 35 kilowatt means you have to convert it to what? 1 over 2, C sub D is 1.2, rho over 1,000, 
and times area of the puddles, which is, I think, 20 meters square, and then the VD. So I, what I will find from this one, I will find the VD. Uh, then uh, when we have VD, uh, I have to find VP, the velocity of the puddle in air. This is, will be the velocity of the puddle in water, and this is the, will be the velocity of puddles in air. And what is the difference? This PT will be less than the PP by 25% uh, is there. Loss is 25%. So uh, what you will get here, uh, let me check, sorry. Okay. And uh, now, uh, from this one, VD, VD is equal to 1.43. Uh, VD cube is, uh, you mean no, the no, VD? No. VD. VD um, yeah. 1.43. 4.3. This is meter per second, why? And I have to find the VP. It means this is the particles when it's rotating in water. Now I want to be happy. Uh, uh, this VP, uh, this is uh, should uh, it be increased by uh, by how much? 0.25 percent. So I have to increase this one uh, by 1.25. So the VP is equal to 1.25 percent plus 25 times 1.43 meter per second. So means. Doctor, where did you get that 1.25? Oh, oh it, the losses, the assume the losses uh, will be 25%. It means that this uh, part of when it's rotating in water, uh, in the reality, uh, is uh, working uh, with 75% of its real one when it's in air. Now, it means that the velocity of the particles when it's 1.43 um, uh, meter per second, it's already missing 25% uh, from its power. Why? Because it's in water. So what should we do? We should increase that uh, velocity by how much? By 25%. So uh, increasing this one, it means I should multiply it by uh, 0.25 and add it um, to the original one. That's why I multiply it directly by 1.25. So 1.25 times 1.343, which is equal to how much? 1.43 uh, times 1.25. Now it's 1.7. 1.787. Yeah, 1.89. Yeah, so now so this puddle, when it's working in water, it has a, a velocity of 1.79 meter per second. And I, when I will put it in water, it will have 1.43. How much is the losses will be? It will be 25% of the losses. Now, this is the linear velocity. Uh, this is the linear velocity. It means um, this is, will be the linear velocity. Linear velocity, but the question asks us to find the RPM. RPM, I think that you have to convert this one to a rotation per minute. Uh, the rotation per minute, RPM, it will be the number of the rotations that we have uh, times. Um, in H1, uh, we have uh, uh, the the diameter uh, the circumference of at each rotation it will be pi d and uh, per uh, pi d over the uh, pi d uh, uh, per se minute minute sixty minutes. Now that's the definition of the RPM. We don't have this one. We need to know how much is one. So we have the 1.78 meter per second is the velocity. The velocity, it means that uh, the distance that have been rotated, how much is the rotation per one unit? It's pi d. Uh, pi d, uh, the distance from the paddle to the paddle is nine meter. 
Now, nine meter, uh, the circumference of this circle is equal to pi times nine, which means uh, how much? Um, nine times 3.14. 28.26 meter will be, uh, uh, will be passed. Okay. Um, per per second, this is what we per second. So uh, what we should do, we should just convert that one to make it a uh, rotation. Then I have to divide it by. Uh, uh, just let me check with this one. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is uh, when we have pi d square over four. This is a diameter number. This is not a vertical. Yeah, yeah. So the area here is the area. Yeah, uh, the p and we when we found this one. So this pp is equal to pi d rpm. Yeah, means when we have this one, when it's rotated, uh, so the pi d is the circumference of this uh, circle. Uh, pi d uh, times n uh, divided by uh, pi d will be the divided by C will be the n. n is uh, nine, uh, one point, uh, or where is it? Uh, BD point. Doctor, I think we have forgotten that two divided by two. Oh, the VD. yeah, that's why. You didn't write it in the equation and I didn't notice. Yeah, and by the way, this divided by two, it means the whole, uh, the whole equation divided should be divided by two. Anyway, uh, that when we get that V, uh, the VP now is, um, yeah, so 99%, this is the VP, which will be divided per second. I will convert it to become per minute. I will divide it by a second. Now, this is will be pi D RPM. Now, I will find this RPM as a three. So, a, a three rotation per minute will give you a velocity of 0.99 meter per second. This is what we need to know. And after that, uh, because, yes. And here, what is the value of VP? VV, the one that we found. No, is VD. VD, VP. Oh. Is 0 0.75. Yeah, the 25 losses when we say the velocity in water and will be velocity in air. So this will so, be really equal to 25 personal will be losses through that one. We, we yeah, said 1.75. Yeah, 0.75 of its actual. So if we have one meter per second in air, so it will be 0.75 meter per second in water. That means we have losses of 25 person. Okay. After this, we have uh, found the rotation per minute, what's the thing that required the value of G. G is very easy, G is equal to P, which is a 35 kilowatt. The volume of the tank that we found, which is the 6,000, and the uh, viscosity of water, which is that. Look at this one, it will be between 10 to 80, uh, which is okay, within the range, okay? That means that we are in the range. Look at the, uh, the standards. Um, yeah, it will be, uh, and by the way, the rotation will be like this. Um, no, it's, oops. yeah, it will be, the, the G should be between 10 to 80 per second. In our case, it was 70, it's so okay. What will be happen if we have the value of G more than this one? We have to increase the power to uh, decrease the power of the motors. It means that uh, you have or increase the volume of the tank to just reach the value of G to make the flow, the, the mixing slower than it's existing. 
So indication of G, it means uh, there is high value of G, it means high flash mixing or rapid mixing. Low value of G, it means low mixing. I think uh, uh, we have done with the lecture. Uh, so I will send you, uh, I think there is a uh, homework here. Yeah. By the way, I want you to, to solve this homework. Mm. Uh, and I will, uh, this is the, the power that we, the mixing power, we have it here. And um, by the way, there is, uh, uh, we have 150,000 capital and each of them having 120 gallon per day. This is gallon per day. So it means that uh, when I will multiply this by that, I will get the Q. So the Q is the, the multiplication of that Q. When we have a Q, and I have the power that's needed here, uh, and the mixing efficiency is here as uh, 80%. So I want you to find the value of um, designed, I want you to design the rapid, rapid. Rapid means flash, rapid tank mixer. So what you should get, you should get a value of G between 500 to 1000 per second. That's first. And the time should be between one to two minutes and it's given to here. So I want you to give me to design this one and this is all be a homework. And I want you to submit it by tonight, uh, today. Uh, uh, in, and just after finishing this one, take a rest and we can just find this one. By the way, we have we have a quiz for another class tonight. So can you put it on? Yeah. Okay. For, for Friday, it will be better because we have on Thursday we have the assignment as well. For Friday, it will be too late. But really, we have a lot of work to do. Okay, I will do it in for Friday. I think you, okay, already, thank you, very you much. already have an assignment you have to submit in Friday. We have to submit it by Thursday, I guess. Okay, then I will do it for Friday. I will on Friday uh, night, or you have to submit this, uh, this homework and I will name it as a chapter three uh, homework, inside lectures uh, homework, okay? Okay, thank you very much. The Q, by the way, this is when you are multiplying this per capita by this one, you will get the average Q. Uh, it say that use the double of that average demand. This is one. Double that Q should be used in the calculation. Be careful of that. Uh, you have temperature is equal to 18 from the table. You can find at 80 degrees Celsius, how much it will be the viscosity. So the viscosity you can get it from any book, any online maybe, just search it for the viscosity at 80 degrees Celsius, you will get a table and you can use that one. Also the efficiency will be 80%, use that one in your uh, calculations. Sir, it is viscosity of water, right? Yes. Okay. And it's existed in every, uh, there is a table for the property, physical properties of water. Uh, I will stop here and I wish you uh, all the best time and uh, I hope to see you next lecture tomorrow.